Okay, everybody, what up? It's your favorite Asian robot right here, hopefully a favorite Helldivers 2 content creator. And what we're going to do today is I'm actually going to show you guys the Terminant meta loadout that me and my Super Earth Elite forces are using uh, in our missions. Basically, if you guys want to see it in action, you can refer you can reference reference the streams that we've done they are linked in the description of this video if you need to see the gameplay you need to understand how we how we run it because basically i've been running the same loadout in pretty much every single mission um there are some variations for eradicate missions but it's mostly in stratagems uh, i'll go through those options later but take note that much like my other metal loadout videos this is going to be a description type video i'm going to be focusing on describing everything making sure you guys know the pros and cons of my choices and whether or not there are any other alternative options okay okay great let's get started we're gonna go right into this all right family we're gonna go through the primary weapon choices for the meta terminate loadout please take note that these are not the only options there are the choices you can make but this is what has worked most effectively for us okay let me go through it camera vanish first the first and most important primary weapon that we're going to talk about is the sickle this one's pretty interesting because it's got several pros and cons that you need to understand. Number one, the pros of this weapon are simple. It's got unlimited ammo if you're conservative, it kills most horde enemies quickly, and it has no recoil so you can fire on the move. However, it also comes with some cons that you have to be aware of. Here we go. It cannot penetrate medium armor, which means your hive guards, your armored bow spears, all not gonna work. You can still kill the brood commanders by aiming at their head, but it's not as effective. It sucks against the armored spewers, which are the bile spewers, not the nursery spewers, okay? It kind of sucks on hot planets, and apparently I missed a space there. It's got a much slower TDK than the other option we're going to talk about, but you have to decide whether the pros outweigh the cons on this. Me personally, I prefer to use this on the longer missions, whereas on the shorter missions, I take the second option. The second meta option is called the Breaker Incendiary. This is from the Steel Veterans Warbond. Oh, I should probably say the Sickle is from the Cutting Edge Warbond. This is from the Steel Veterans Warbond. Um, for this particular one, the Super Earth Elite like to use the Breaker Incendiary because of the following pros. The damage it deals is extremely high right now. It's got a huge capacity compared to the other Breakers. Um, and, you know, sort of similar to the Breaker Spray and Pray. It's got burning damage which shreds hordes. You can deal with bow spears by shooting their sack. <laughs> and you can ignite your friends, which makes for some hilarious moments as you've seen on stream. Now, for the cons of this weapon. Here we go. It burns through ammo quickly. Yeah? I bet you love that joke. Laugh. Laugh. Alright, but anyway. It burns through ammo quickly. Um, it's only light armor penetration, so you're still not going to be able to burn through some of them. But there is a way around this. When it comes to the Hive Guards, you can actually aim at the fleshy bits and it will burn them and they will die. The burn DOT, damage over time, is smaller than other fire weapons. I don't know why, but it is pretty small. So, um, although you can ignite your friends and kill them, uh, you will kill them a lot more slowly than if you were to use a flamethrower or something like that. And the downside, of course, is that you can ignite your friends unintentionally if you are not good with aiming this weapon. That being said, this weapon is still fantastic. So... Between the Sickle and the Breaker Incendiary, which is truly best? It's really up to you. Usually on Eradicate, Blitz missions, or shorter missions where we expect to clear our enemies quickly, we tend to use the Breaker Incendiary. I prefer the Sickle for longer missions where I'm going to be in the field for longer because it prevents me from having to resupply. And uh, it allows me to focus my resupplies on my grenades or my pickups on my grenades, giving ammo to other players who may be using other loadouts. All right? So these two are the top choices for the primary weapon. Are there any other primary weapons that work well? Yes and no. There are some honorable mentions here. Plasma and Scorcher, good for de dealing with uh, the spore spewers at a distance, which is hilarious because it's got unlimited range. Um, you've got the Breaker Spray and Prey, which is a pretty decent horde clear weapon that a lot of people like to use if they do not own the Steel Veterans Warbond. So this one gets a pretty nice mention as well, but it's only light armor penetrating. Um, the original Breaker is decent, but its smaller magazine capacity makes it more of a one-shot type deal. Um, not really popular anymore. The Slugger used to be a primo choice, but the lack of stagger has sort of killed it. Some people still do like to use it. The Punisher, good choice, but light armor penetrating as well. Um, Plasma Punisher is a very, very excellent choice, but this is only for those that really know how to use it well. 
Uh, chances are, if you're inexperienced, you're going to end up murdering yourself. Uh, there are several other weapons that could be used, but the primary ones that are the ones that we talked about. Sickle and Breaker Incendiary. I'm sure some of you have also used the Jar. Great against the uh, heavier bugs, but less useful, especially on Helldive when things get really swarmy. So I prefer not to bring the Jar against the bugs, but it's up to you. Alright, let's move on to the secondary weapon section, shall we? Okay, for the secondary weapon section, I'm going to keep it uh, real, real quick and real smooth. Um, there are generally two options which are favored by everybody. You are either going to use the Redeemer or the Senator. Um, my personal choice is the Redeemer because, and this one there's no pros and cons to talk about because it's really very straightforward. The Redeemer is basically a machine pistol which you can set to semi-automatic and uh, fire it one bullet at a time. This is actually the preferred way to fire it because it's very ammo efficient against the smaller horde creatures. Keep in mind that it's only light armor penetrating. If you need something that's medium armor penetrating with a much slower reload, which I find not so good against bugs because they tend to be very swarmy, this thing will actually take the head off most brute commanders and because it's medium armor penetrating you can actually use it against the bile armored spewers. So this is another interesting choice. Um, that being said, once the grenade pistol's in, the metal loadout might be modified. But basically, your choice is between these two. Just choose whichever one you prefer. If you have, if you struggle more with the horde, take the redeemer. If you struggle more with the armored uh, enemies, then take the senator, and you're pretty much good to go. That's literally it for the secondary weapon section. Okay, family, for the grenade section. All right, there are two clear winners. And one is favored by the Super Earth Elite. The Super Earth Elite pretty much use ex uh, incendiary grenades exclusively. Why? After the increase to the fire damage, this is so good. You just burn out bug breaches and you'll see our kill counter going crazy like 30, 40. This is beyond good. I love it so much that I take an engineering kit armor just to run this, alright? The other winner is the impact gren uh, grenade. Why do we not use the stun grenades anymore? Okay, um, unlike the stun grenades which came into prominence after the AMR buff, the stun grenades have sort of fallen out of favor on the bug side. Why? Because you don't really need to stun charges. Quite frankly, you can just quasar them in the head. So, realistically, I don't find very much use for stun as opposed to incendiary or impact. Impact's uh, primarily used if you really, really want to deal with bug holes fast because you just throw them, boom, done or spewers fast. If your problem is mostly dealing with bow spewers, then the impact grenade should be your choice. It gets rid of spewers in a snap, all right? So this is an excellent choice for either kind of spewer. Bile or nursery, just use this, they're done. Um, the incendiary is better when you're dealing with hordes, so you have to make the choice between those two. These are the two primary choices for grenades. Nothing else is really used. Stun grenades are still used sometimes, but they were used more prominently in the past because they could stun Bile Titans. This is no longer the case. The stun grenades no longer do that, but you can still you can still stun chargers. However, most people just Quasar them in the head or just leg them and kill them that way. The, I mean, with the Quasar in existence, chargers and Bile Titans are not really a threat. So it's more the hordes and the Bile Spears that you want to worry about. Okay? Let's move on to the stratagems. Okay, ladies and gents, I might be Super Earth Elite, but I'm also a Super Earth Dumbass sometimes because I forgot. Before we go on to stratagems, we got to talk about armor. When it comes to armor, I have one particular set that I favor above all else, and that is the CE-74 Breaker set. Why? Two extra grenades means two more incendiaries. That's what we've been using on Helldive. Six grenades blast out everything. Bug breaches, no problem. Two grenades per breach, throw your napalm strikes on, nothing is going to survive. It will last. You can keep napalming three with three napalms, right? You can napalm a bug breach until, you know, all your uses are used up and everything will die. There's literally no, nothing is going to get out alive. So that's how we've been surviving on Helldive. It's practically made it a vacation. So this is my currently favorite armor set. Uh, are there any other choices? Yes, there are. You can choose any light armor set. In general, light armor sets are the favored armor set against the bugs. Do some people use the medium armor sets? Yes and no. Uh, some folks do prefer the engineering set here. Or some of the other medium armor sets. Listen, I give you, I'll just say it's your personal preference. Choose whichever armor set you like, just don't choose the heavy armor set because it makes it very difficult to outrun a Bile Titan, which will kill you because it won't protect you from a Bile Titan stabbing you with its leg, alright? So, realistically, most of us run light armor or medium armor maximum, even in Helldive. You will often see me in Helldive literally running this. The CE-74 Breaker. This, I love. 
You have no idea how much I love this armor set. Okay, thank God I picked it up from the Superstore because this thing, two extra grenades, is beautiful. The only thing I hate about it is that it looks like a freaking dad armor set because it's got two extra pockets there. Not really my jam. Anyway, for your helmet and cape, just choose whatever you like. This is from the Combat Tactician. And the cape is, of course, my Bastion of Integrity. I do love my Fallen Heroes Vengeance, but, you know, we're synthetics. Super Earth Elite. Gotta be the Bastion of Integrity, you know what I'm saying? Alright, that's about it. Now we can move on to stratagems. Okay, fam, let's talk about support stratagems. Um, in terms of your stratagems, the first thing we're going to discuss is actually the support weapon choice for this metal loadout. And I think everybody pretty much universally agrees that the Quasar Cannon, also known as the Quesadilla Cannon, or the Queso Cannon, is uh, pretty much your ultimate choice against the Terminates. Are there other good support weapons? Hell yes, I'll mention them in a minute. But the Queso Cannon basically uh, overtakes all of them. Let's discuss the pros and cons, and I'll also do a camera vanish so it's easier for you to pay attention. Okay... Here's we, here we go. Here's we go. Damn, I swear. I really gotta get better at speaking. Okay, in terms of pros, here's what's good about the Quasar Cannon. It's got the same damage as the Recoilless Rifle. It's got literally unlimited ammo. It's got unlimited range with no bullet drop that you have to account for. And you get to call it a Queso Cannon, which is pretty awesome. Here are the cons, though. The cons of this weapon, it's got a slow AF charging time, which takes a while to get used to. This means that you can't just fire directly at a target once you acquire it. Some of you might be used to that with the Recallus and the EAT. If you prefer that, go for it, but this one, you've got to account for the charging time. The cooldown is also roughly 10 seconds, which is annoying. It can miss if it's aimed badly. There's distortion when aiming in first person, which honestly can make you a little sick. And it does not actually fire quesadillas, which I was very disappointed about. Okay, now, about the Quasar Cannon, what you gotta understand is that you can one-shot a Charger if you shoot it in the head. Okay, if you shoot a Charger in the head, it's a one-shot. It does the same things that a Recoilless Rifle does. If you, two sh if you shoot two of them into a Bile Titan's head, the Bile Titan is gone. It will die. So, the Quasar Cannon is not to be underestimated. That and the fact that it's got unlimited ammo means that you can run, gun, shoot in the field and literally never run out. This is what we've been doing on our streams. It is absolutely fantastic. Are there other weapons that could also go well? Yes and no. I'm going to give you a quick overview of some of the other weapons that we uh, kind of use against the Terminates. Okay, when it comes to the Terminate faction, the Arc Thor is well known. All right. Um, after the range nerf and the uh, charging time nerf, it's a little less useful against the Terminates. This is because Terminates tend to be very swarmy. Um, without the faster charging time, they can quickly overwhelm your position if you're not the type to know how to fire it exactly on the dot of one second. So, and that and the shorter range also means that if an enemy is charging in, you have to wait until they get closer. So it can be a bit difficult to use, and of course it misses at very close range, which means that the sweet spot is between 5 meters to 35 meters, which is not exactly a good range. That gives you about 30 meters to shoot your gun, and in that time the Terminates can close the distance very fast with Hunters, uh, Warriors, all that kind of stuff. So you just want to be very careful when still you, if you're still keen on using the Arc Thor. The Laser Cannon is another big favorite for the Terminates. It's got very, very good range, range up to about 210 meters. Um, ish. I, I don't know the exact range. I didn't measure, but it is very, very good. You can actually deal with chargers using this by uh, zapping their butt. Same with the auto cannon. Um, but the big downside is that it's mostly a medium armor pen weapon, and it cannot damage the charger's front leg, so it's not really very good from that perspective. The flamethrower and the auto cannon are the last two I'm going to mention. The flamethrower is absolutely excellent for horde clear, but it still doesn't have really good range, so it's problematic and you'll struggle with Bile Titans compared to the Quasar. Um, the flamethrower can actually kill charges really fast by aiming at one of the front legs. Uh, we've tested and done this, especially with the new improvements to burn damage. You'll actually kill the charges so fast, it's hilarious. Uh, that being said, it struggles against Bile Titans, which are a primary enemy that you're going to see on difficulty 9, so you don't want to have more than one flamethrower on your squad. The flamethrower otherwise is a very excellent weapon. Uh, other than this, the auto cannon, pretty much same dealio, really good against pretty much all sorts of enemies. You can close bug holes from a distance. It's a very you can deal with shrieker nests from a distance. You can deal with spore spears from a distance. You can deal with everything from a distance, but it still loses out to the quasar cannon because the quasar cannon can one shot a charger from the front. This cannot. You have to wait for it to turn its bum, and it's also useless against the battle titans, which again are a big enemy that you're going to see in difficulty nine. So all these are honorable mentions. 
but the quasar is pretty much the ultimate choice and is basically used uh, almost exclusively in difficulty 9 so I love the quasar cannon it does a lot it does a lot all right so don't hesitate to pick it up okay that about covers it for the sport weapon let's move on to the next section okay family in terms of your backpack slot I'm gonna give it to you straight all you're gonna need is a guard dog rover the only exception is that when you're using either the arc thrower or the flamethrower which are close range weapons you might want a shield generator pack all right but otherwise the guard dog rover is the be all and end all what about the guard dog wasn't it buffed recently um the problem with the guard dog is that terminids are very swarmy this was this actually saw more use against the automatons and it was pretty good but it still got limited ammo versus literally unlimited ammo and considering this rover's laser is way better than the side that we have this is actually one of the best choices for use against the terminids so you for your backpack slot a guard dog rover is pretty much the best choice if you're going to use some alternative loadouts you can take a supply pack but my honest choice and pretty much what you'll see in every single one of the streams i was doing is my use of the guard dog rover because it's just so good for handling the terminate hordes it helps you take your mind off a lot of the smaller creatures allowing you to focus on the bigger ones even if you're using the scythe so that's about it for the backpack slot okay ladies and gents last but not least we're going to be talking about stratagems all right this one there's a whole load of what ifs and maybes about this but i'm just going to tell you my top choice for the eagle top choice for the orbitals and i'll give you a couple of alternatives but that's about it we're not going to do pros and cons for this because it's really simple and straightforward to do all right here we go let's talk about it so my primary choice for the eagles which you'll see in all my streams and videos is pretty much the eagle napalm airstrike why this is so good against the terminates listen you've got three uses of this bad boy okay once you've got the ship module upgraded otherwise it's two uses but basically there's eight seconds in between each use um it will be extended a little bit to i think around about 12 seconds uh if if you have the modifier that increases cooldowns uh sorry yeah sorry if you've got the modifier that increases cooldowns it's 10 seconds between each use but the eagle napalm airstrike when you put it on a bug breach will literally kill everything that comes out of it and you can literally spam this three times before it goes on a very short two minute cooldown or two minutes and 30 seconds if you've got the modif uh, the modifier that increases cooldowns by 25%. That's it. Two minutes and 30 seconds, you've got another three uses. All right? Bomb the bug breach as soon as you see it and nothing is going to survive. You can keep your old team safe. It's so, so good. Do not sleep on this because this will kill all terminates that even try and do anything to you. Okay? Other honorable mentions, Eagle Airstrike is a very popular one. Uh, and 500 kilogram bomb is still very popular because Ball Titan killing. But my personal favorite right now is Napalm Airstrike. Why? Because I use the Queso Cannon for the uh, Ball Titans. And in terms of the Orbital, I use the Orbital Rail Cannon Strike. Okay, when it comes to the Orbitals, I prefer the Rail Cannon Strike above everything else. Why? Because it's so good for hitting a Ball Titan or a very annoying charger. It's also on a 210 second cooldown, which is slightly longer than three minutes. If you extend it by 25%, then what you're gonna see is another 42 seconds added on, which will take you to 252 seconds, which is, uh, let me see, four minutes-ish? Yeah, rough, roughly close to about four minutes. Uh, slightly longer four minutes and 12 seconds exactly but yes it's about there and honestly still very useful even if i can only call it down once every four minutes so helpful against battle titans this gets us through so many fights all right we love the rail cannon strike other honorable mentions 380 millimeter barrage please don't bring this on an eradicate mission i prefer the 120 millimeter if you're going to use it for dealing with bug breaches but it's really up to you um doesn't do as well against battle titans as compared to the 380 millimeter but i think you can understand that Orbital laser is not really used as often, but honest to God, if you want to use it, go ahead. Nobody's going to stop you. Gas strike fulfills the, uh, sorry, it's down here. Gas strike fulfills the same role as the napalm does. So if you're going to use the gas strike, you can kill the terminate hordes even faster, but you'll probably struggle against the bigger guys. So unless you're dividing up roles in your team, which is totally fine, um, so, like, if somebody else is bringing along a rail cannon strike, I'll usually use gas strike and napalm to sort of help out, but really it's up to you. Okay, you can choose what you want to use, but for me personally, napalm airstrike and rail cannon are standard. It is so good, helps your team out in so many situations, and this 
is what I love to use, ladies and gents. This is what brings the justice, freedom, liberty, and democracy to these godless bugs. I'll tell you that, okay? You can bring super god right to them with this. Okay. Let's go through a quick overview, yeah? Okay, final overview, ladies and gents. So, what are we using against the Terminates? Well, if you guys have seen my streams and videos, you'll know. Primary weapon, either the Breaker Incendiary or the Sickle, okay? For the secondary, either the Redeemer or the Senator. For the grenades, either your Incendiary or Impact Grenades, your choice. Stun Grenades, I guess, if you're a little bit of a weirdo. Um, for the armor, choose any light or medium armor that you like. I've already given my recommendation. For my stratagems, I always run Napalm. And then either Gas, if I want to go more Horde Clear, or Rail Cannon, if I want to go more Heavy. All right, or, you know, Napalm, Rail Cannon is pretty standard, which you probably see on my streams most of the time. Quasar Cannon, standard, and the Rover. Because both of these are amazing, they don't run out of ammo. All right, that's kind of the key. The Terminids are a very swarmy enemy. They don't run out of bodies to throw at you, so you must not run out of ammo because they are going to kill you. All right, running out of ammo is one of the worst things. If you don't want to burn through supplies, that's something you've got to do. So the Super Earth Elite recommends these choices. But if you need to deviate, you know, I've given you some other options. You can also come up with your own loadouts. Meta stands for most effective tactics available. I've given you that, okay? If you want to deviate from that, that is your choice absolutely, okay? I'm not going to say you can only play this way. Nobody ever gets kicked for a loadout, and if anybody does, then you can introduce them to the SLAP program, all right? Super long distance attitude adjustment program, also known as this hand right here, okay? You can introduce them to that. But what I do kick for is people who do not contribute. So if you do not contribute actively to your team, consider changing your loadout. Why do we use this loadout? Because it's easy. We've run it on Helldive. We mostly play on Helldive now because the buff to fire damage makes the bugs a cakewalk. Compared to everything you've seen on the Automaton Frontier, if you guys are wearing this badge up here, Super Earth Elite right there, okay, pretty much the bugs are going to be a cakewalk. You can do level 9 with your eyes closed. So, yeah, um, have fun. Go on hell dives. I want to see you guys on hell dives. We're going to liberate this planet, these planets at like super speed. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will happily address and answer your questions as much as I can. Thank you very much, ladies and gents. You guys have been a wonderful audience. Let me give some thanks to some of our top supporters this month. All right. You guys are amazing. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Starting right at the top. Our top tipper this month is still open. Top Super Chatter is Teddy Lasso. Top Super Chatter list includes Crow's Flight, Grum Call Thraka, Track Hoodie, Daza, Rebo Zone, Olivia Moses. Thank you so much. Iron Espio as well. Uh, top Channel Membership Gifter is Grasshopper. Thank you so much. Top Channel Membership Gifter list, Lord J and Vinny. Thank you so much for everything you guys have done for me, and I am going to vamoosh off right now. Okay? Oh, and don't forget, thank you to all my channel members as well. Almost forgot. Jeez, how could I forget? These guys are some of the top of the table, all right? These guys are amazing. Let's start right at the tippy top. Okay. At the only fan level, we've got Teddy Lasso and Nisk. At the plus ultra level, we've got Arcane Silver and Death Dawning. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our prestige and honored robots as well. I love you and we'll see you guys on the next one, okay? Y'all stay happy, and I'll catch you later.